Hello and welcome to another Internet Programming and Database tutorial. In this tutorial we will going to be looking at converting this loop into an equivalent for condition loop. So we're going to be starting out with this example that I created earlier on with while loop. I'll copy this and I'll paste it right over here in this slide that I have for for loop. And I'm going to be telling you the differences between the while loop and the for loop so that you can see how they're different with, from each other. So I'm going to be changing the layout to comparison layout. So this is the while loop. And here I'm going to be doing the equivalent for loop just so that you can see how different they are from each other. So let's give them a little background so that you can easily see the differences. Okay. So here we have a while loop and here I'm doing the equivalent for loop. So the first statement is going to stay the same. We're still going to declare an integer called counter. However, in while loop, what we do with the help of three different instructions, which is the starting point, the ending condition, and the increment, they all could be done in only one line when for loop. So you can pretty much say for counter equals 1 to 10. In the body, you can simply display the value of counter. And you can say next. And that is basically the for loop equivalent to this while loop. So one of the good things about for loop is by default, when you give a starting point and an ending point, it does increments by one. So you don't have to uh, tell that increment by one. If you have to increment by more than one, then in the next set of tutorial, I'm going to show you how you go about doing that. So that's all for now. Hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching.